God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock, aka Sam Lopez. Listen, I'm gonna share a powerful video right from the top. I want you to pay attention to this video. What this video is saying, the words that come across the screen, and everything. Just take it in. Inhale, you know, inhale the breath of God, exhale victory over your life. Let's look at this video and we'll come back when we come back we'll discuss if you ever heard this type of terminology if you ever heard this this being said but sometimes we have to learn how to flip the script on what people say and what they believe and how they they try to say that what we're believing as christ followers is nonsense but sometimes we have to learn in love and in truth to flip the script so I'm going to share a powerful video. I hope you are blessed by it. When I first saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm going to share this one day. And today's that day. Amen. That I'm going to share this video on the Morning Devo. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about what is it that God has for your benefit and for my benefit. Amen. So good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. I'm going to share a video. I'm going to come back. Um, then I'll greet some people that's online with us. Amen. So good morning. Um, my name is Brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, and this is the Morning Devotional, and this is the power of what happens when you quarantine a disciple of Jesus. I'll be right back. I live my life according to these beliefs. God does not exist. It's just foolish to think that there is an all-knowing God with a cosmic plan. That an all-powerful God brings purpose to the pain and suffering in the world. It's a comforting thought, however. It is only wishful thinking. People can do as they please without eternal consequences. The idea that I'm deserving of hell because of sin is a lie meant to make me a slave to those in power. The more you have, the happier you will be. Our existence has no grand meaning or purpose. In a world with no God, there is freedom to be who I want to be. But with God, life is an endless cycle of guilt and shame. Without God, everything is fine. It is ridiculous to think I am lost and in need of saving. And that's how I felt before Christ opened my eyes and changed my heart. I'm lost and in need of saving. It is ridiculous to think everything is fine. Without God, life is an endless cycle of guilt and shame. But with God, there is freedom to be who I want to be. In a world with no God, our existence has no grand meaning or purpose. The more you have, the happier you will be is a lie meant to make me a slave to those in power. Because of sin, I am deserving of hell. The idea that people can do as they please without eternal consequences is only wishful thinking. It's a comforting thought, however, that an all-powerful God brings purpose to the pain and suffering in the world. That there is an all-knowing God with a cosmic plan. It's just foolish to think God does not exist. Powerful, right? I told you that was a powerful video that I was going to share. When I first saw that, I said, yeah, the first part, it was getting me a little bit angry. I was like, whoa, you know, because I heard this and I hear this all the time, you know, it's impossible. God does not exist. 
you know, we're fine without God. We can do everything without God. We don't need God. Um, and then they look at Christians and say, oh, you need Jesus. Um, that's why you have to have a God because you have to believe and you have to do this, that, and the third. And, and I'm like, listen, if you reverse what people are saying, amen, they will realize that without God, they can't do A to Z. Without God, you can't do anything. Without God, you won't have life. Without God, you won't have breath. Without God, you won't have the creation. Amen. And I understand that um, when we're prideful, and I was prideful too, and you didn't want to hear nothing about no God controlling you, you wanted to believe, and I wanted to believe, that I had control over my life, that nobody could tell me what to do, what I can do, and all that. And I believed it, and I ran with it. And everybody else ran with it. And it's, it was a popular way of believing because that's the easy way um, to believe. To not believe in God according to what the Word of God says is foolishness. So April Fool's Day, April 1st, is actually in the Scriptures. God says it, you're a fool to not believe that there is a God. If you're saying that there is no God, the Bible says you're a fool. I, Sam Lopez, was a fool. Because I really thought there was no God over my life and that he could do anything in my life. Until I challenged him one day and I asked him to change me. I was like, oh, okay, you're real, right? Like everybody's telling me, then this is how I'm going to test it out. You changed me and the rest is history. And that happened way back in 2001. Amen. So let me greet some people that are on here with me. Good morning, Pastor Michael Jakes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning and God bless you as well. May I saw God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the morning Devo. Listen, for your benefit, what's happening, good or bad in your life, is for your benefit. And I know it doesn't sound right. Like, listen, when somebody is hurting, when somebody's suffering, when somebody's in pain, when somebody's sick, when somebody dies, that's all not right. It's not right. So a lot of people will ask me, how can a good God allow evil and suffering in this world? And that is a valid question. That's a good question. I've asked that question a million zillion times as well. It's a good question. But when you know the, the how you call it, the characteristics of God, when you know his attributes, amen, you'll start to understand that, wait a minute, instead of blaming God for pain, suffering, death, sickness, disease, coronavirus, instead of blaming God for that, which he is a good God, amen, we need to maybe back up off God blaming him and see what did we play, what part did I play in this whole mess, in this whole fallenness and brokenness of the world, what part did I play? Because I, I could tell you one thing, I wasn't born with a Bible in my hand, I wasn't born serving the Lord. I wasn't born a Christian. Amen. I was born just like everybody else that's watching was born um, through the womb of their mom. And you came into this world not knowing nothing. You had no choice who your mom was going to be, who your dad was going to be. You had no choice if you're going to be white, black, yellow, brown. You had no choice where you was going to be born. You had no choice if you were going to be a male or female. Listen, we had no choice when we came on this earth. Did you know you were going to be a girl or did you know you was going to be a boy? Did you know you was going to be Puerto Rican, black, Hispanic, uh, Latin, white, Russian? Did you know that? Really? Did you know that? No, you didn't. And if you're honest, you have to say, well, wow, I, I came here with no choices. I had no choice in the matter. Amen. Um, my dad and my mom got together and then boom, a seed was planted in my mom's womb. And then nine months later or so. I came to be. Now, you're a baby. You start learning. Who you start learning for, for the most part. I'm talking about, you know, children that are born into a family. I know there's situations where children are born into foster care. I know there's situations where people are, um, people are born and then they're adopted. I understand that. Amen. Um, but this all for our benefit. The fact of the matter that we didn't have a choice when we were first born. Amen should give us a clue that if we didn't have a choice in the beginning, amen, at the end, amen, we should, there should be some kind of choice to make at the end, towards the end of our lives, or when we're old enough to make a choice. 
because in the beginning, let's it's fair, right? All of us started the same way as infants without a choice. We didn't know how to talk. We didn't know how to walk. Amen. Um, we couldn't relate. Like we had to learn things. Amen. In the very beginning. So this whole thing of like the video says, um, God does not exist. We don't need God. We're good. We're fine without him. You know, uh, you know, just live your life type of thing. It doesn't make any sense if you turn back to the beginning of your life when you had to learn things. You, you had no choice. You had no control over your life. Amen. So to me, that's an indication that if I came here without choice, that means somebody had decided for me beforehand to bring me here. Not something, not some big bang, not none of that. Someone decided to have me born on this planet. I could have been born, you know, in Pluto or something. But it, someone chose me to live on this planet through the parents that I was given, through the situation that I was given, through the place where I was born. Amen. And that goes for everybody watching. Even atheists, if they're honest, and I hope you're not good, no one argues about how we were born. I hope we all realize that we were all born the same way through a mother's womb. And it's all for our benefit. You don't believe me, right? It's all for our benefit. Amen. Did I greet everybody? Yeah, I greeted everybody. Okay. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. It's very quick, directly to the point of what I want to um, go over here and what role we play in this benefit game. This whole thing about benefits. Your job, if you have a good one, you have good benefits. If your job it's not too good. You probably have social benefits. And if your job is flat out no good, you probably have no benefits. And those benefits matter, right? When you have a good job and you have good benefits, it takes like some kind of load off your shoulders because you're thinking about what happens if I get sick, what happens if um, I lose a loved one or, or myself goes, who's going to take care of the family. So those benefits are in place for a reason and it's for your benefit. Don't you think that if earthly rulers and bosses and people that you work for that are, you know, on this realm with us, don't you think that there's a higher realm and with a higher person um, we call God, amen, that has greater benefits for us and benefits that are eternal, that last, amen, way longer than the temporary benefits that we have in a job or in a position or in a career, or if you're an entrepreneur like me or a solopreneur, or an independent um, contractor, whatever the case may be, independent business owner, don't you think that God has a better benefit plan for us than we could ever imagine? And it doesn't take a lot for somebody to not believe in God. And it doesn't take a lot for somebody to believe in God. I'll explain that in a minute after I read the scripture. Amen. But I want to give you all 60 seconds. God foreknew us before the foundations of the world. Yes, my soul. He foreknew us. He knew me. He knew you before we knew ourselves. Incredible statement, incredible word, incredible power of God, incredible omniscience. God knows all things. Amen. But I also understand that people say, so what? I don't believe in God. I was watching uh, what was supposed to be a discussion and it turned into a debate between a Christian and an atheist. The atheist said, out of his own mouth is on YouTube. You can watch it. He said out of your own, out of his own mouth that he used to be a Christian. I'm still trying to figure out what does that mean when somebody says they used to be a Christian. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think he was a pastor and then for whatever reason, he became an atheist. So when someone would ask him or the one that was having the debate with him, he says, well, that was a false conversion. He says, well, you can't tell me that's a false conversion. Just that's just not true. I don't believe in the Lord. I don't believe there's a God anymore. So was it for his benefit? And he asked this question. He said, so an all knowing God knew I was going to become an atheist. And the person asked, well, uh, all knowing God knew you could make a choice to either serve him or not. I think that's the real 
thing when it comes to the benefits that Christians have and the benefits that we're trying to offer to the world as disciples of Christ, I think a lot of people are like, that's too good to be true. And they shy away from it. Because if you, you can't come to Christianity trying something. It's not like you're trying a membership at a gym. If you believe and repent and trust and put your trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will be saved. And after that salvation, within that salvation, through that salvation, you will have new desires, a new heart, a new mind, a new mindset. Amen. And you will trust in the living, holy, kind, just God. And there's nothing to try. Amen. When you believe in the person of Jesus Christ, amen, you're having a relationship. Trying something is like, let's see what happens if this is all true. Let's see what type of benefits I'll get. And then you'll get some benefits. And then when the life happens and it's going to happen to everybody, then you'll be like, oh, wow, this didn't work out the way, listen, the way I expected. So God must not be real. So I'm not going to believe him. There is no God. Uh, I know so many people that do that with their lives and they say, well, it didn't happen the way I want it. They're not listening to what they're saying. It didn't happen the way I want it. So I don't believe there's a God. So that means you became your own God and you want to control the circumstances, situation in life. I can't control what's going to happen a minute from now. I can't control what's going to happen an hour from now and neither can you. So we're all on the level playing field here. Amen. But God wants to let us know that Everything that's happening in our lives is for our benefit. Let me give you 60 seconds to share this with as many people as you can. Then when we come back, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. I'll be right back. Second Corinthians, and I'm going to back it up because, um, let's see if I did this right here. Second Corinthians four, I'm going to start at verse number eight, because then we'll stop at 15 and then you'll get, you'll realize why, um, this is mentioned about the benefits for our benefit that this is done. Because if you're a Christian and you're a Christ follower and you, you repent it, a Christian means this. You were living your own way, your own life. I was living my own life, right? Doing it the way you wanted to do it, doing it the way I wanted to do it. Then one day or any day, or it could be today for you, you stopped and thought about it and said, this is not going right. Life is, you know, flying by and I don't have no kind of direction. So you stop what you're doing and you repent. That word repent means turn from your ways and turn to the ways of God. Stop what you're doing and turn your way to God. Repent, stop. And then you go and you ask Jesus, ask God to forgive you for going your own way, apart from what he wants. And then he'll forgive you. Jesus will send his spirit into us. Amen. Holy Spirit, God, and you'll be forgiven. And the Bible says you will be saved, transformed, renewed, reborn, born again. Amen. And you'll start to change. And your desires will be kind of like removed and God's desires will be placed in replace of our own evil, sinful desires. And he'll put his desires in us. And then our mind will start changing. Our thought process will start changing. He won't stop what you're doing. Amen. He'll just change why you do it. Amen. And who you do it for. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we'll start at verse 8. And this will make a lot of sense to Christians 
And if you're not a born, born again believer, you don't believe God, you're an atheist, whatever, just listen because then you'll understand how we feel about this. And then you'll kind of like give us some slack about why they so why they always think they have the truth and why do they believe in God and all that. So all the questions, you might get some clarity if you just listen. This is Apostle Paul writing to the church. We are pressed on every side by troubles. So if if you're a born again Christian and somebody, another Christian saying, well, we have God now. We're not going to face any troubles. Everything's going to be fine and perfect. Um, they're not reading their scripture. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down. Hello. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Verse 10. Through suffering. And this is the part where a lot of people check out. They don't. When suffering, what's I have to suffer if I'm a Christian? I might as well just stay where I'm at. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. That right there, I could preach. Are you kidding me? Through suffering, our bodies, this flesh and bones, Continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. So when people see us crushed, perplexed, suffering, amen, now they're looking at us and, oh, what are these, how are these Christians are going to react? And they see through our reaction, through our pain, through our suffering, the brokenness, amen, we see that we share in the suffering and the death of our Lord Jesus. And at the same time, we get to see the life of Jesus coming through us and people start noticing that verse 11 yes we live under constant danger of death because we serve jesus we serve jesus as christ followers hello so that the life of jesus will be evident in our dying bodies show me the evidence atheists always say uh show me the evidence that there's a god that exists well if they, if they know people that are born again and changed and have a, a true conversion and they are truly saved, they have the proof. It's called a change, transform life. But they, for some reason, they just overlook that. It's, ah, that was just a good person. None of us are good. The only good that's in me is God in me. Amen? So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life. Because listen to the eternal life for you. It's for your benefit, believer. It's for your benefit, unbeliever. It's for your benefit, atheist, pantheist, agnostic, cynic, skeptic. It's for your benefit. When you see me in pain, when you see me suffering, when you see me facing death, when you see me suffering and facing trials in life, amen, and then you see the life of God through me, it's for your benefit. God wants to reveal himself to you. Where's the evidence? Where's the proof? And you go into all the science and you go to all of this. And it doesn't matter when you're on the deathbed anymore, does it? Does it? Or they, I never heard an atheist that I've known, at least, um, say, oh, um, you know, let's see if I won this debate when they're, when they're dying. Um, then it's not going to matter. But then when they get prayers of the righteous go to the hospital, prayers uh, of people believe in faith, amen, they they welcome that. Why wouldn't you welcome, right, the presence of God's people? You don't believe in God? I do. So what's the problem? I've never, I, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of debates I see online, um, sometimes the Christian gets upset too because it's frustrating because you're trying to be kind. You're, you're trying to just read the scripture and you're trying to explain your point. And I don't know if it's my imagination, but the atheist or the other agnostic or the person that's saying this does this is all rubbish and it's foolish, they get angry. Well, what are you getting angry about? Listen, if I knew something wasn't real, I don't got to get angry about it. If it's not real, it's not real. So why would I get angry about something that's not real? It won't hurt if it's not real. It won't be true if it's not real, right? So verse 12, so we live in, we live in the faith of death. Faith, 
We live in the face of death. I'm tongue-tied. But this has resulted in eternal life for you. Uh, okay. Verse 13. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. I'm not, listen, I'm not hiding out. Everybody who knows me knows I'm a Christian. Amen. And I shouldn't say that. I'm lying. The people who know me know I'm a Christian. I have neighbors. They, you know, I wave at them and everything else like that, but we never had that conversation. Amen. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're showing enough kindness just through the wave, through the smiles, you know, through the acknowledgement that they will see that, you know, that we kind of like have decency <laughs> and our morals is in check. We're not wild li living, loud music and all that stuff. Um, so I'm hoping that one day we will have discussions that will lead to an eternal discussion in Christ. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Joyce. So verse 13, but we continue to preach. Why? Because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. If you believe, you need to speak up. No, you don't have to argue. This is not, I'm done with arguing. If people want to debate and want to argue. I'm done. I'll listen because there's always a reason, 100%. There's always a reason why people don't believe in God. And we as believers have to listen and respect that. Amen. But it should be both ways. I, I just wish it was both ways. I wish that, you know, People actually, and this is a true story, have gotten mad at me because I believe in Jesus. So, you know, I'm, I'm mad now. Why? If you don't believe in God, and I do, what's the problem? If if God's not real, then there's no, no hurt, no harm, no foul. You know what I mean? But if he is real and what he's saying is true, then that's why I speak up. Because out of love, I'm like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me... Whoever dies rejecting Jesus will go to a place of eternal fire, hell, damnation. Not on my watch. As long as I have breath, I would say, hey, man, hey, girl, hey, woman, hey, lady. You know, uh, let's just talk about this real quick because we, we don't have a lot of time. How would you lead somebody to the Lord if they only had like a day to live? You would speak up. Share your testimony, show scriptures, ask them if they have a relationship with God. I did it with family members that were almost, you know, out of here. Amen. And praise the Lord. Let's see what happens. Amen. If uh, I know there's people um, that re re rejected the Lord and I know there's people that received Jesus as Lord and Savior. So either way, either side of the coin, it's a decision to be made. Amen. Amen. Sister, um, Jenny, God bless you. How are you? Good morning. God bless. Welcome to the morning Devo. Verse 14. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. Uh, on the debate that I was watching on YouTube yesterday, um, the atheist kept on asking the Christian, you say, you know, how do you know? You're asserting that you're putting that into the conversation. How do you know? How do you know? Well, the scripture says we know. <laughs> Listen, sometimes it is what it is. How do you know? Well, the Bible says it. Oh, the Bible is this, that, and the third. And then they start attacking the Bible. Oh, well, I heard from God. Oh, how do you know that was the voice of God? Well, uh, you know, I'm a changed man. Oh, how do you know you really changed? Like every single part of this debate, when they were having a debate, when a Christian would say something, the guy would say, nah, that's not, that's not true. That can't be. But, uh, and on and on and on and on and on. It's not even a fair conversation. Listen, if you disagree, I want to listen to the reason or the reasons why you disagree. And I'm going to be quiet. So I need to listen. Then on the other end, this is how you communicate. Communication one-on-one. -on -one. Then on the other end, when the other person speaks, you listen. That's it. I mean, a conversation. But every time if you say something and then you just wipe the other person out by over speaking and talking over them, then you're really not having a conversation. It's really not a debate either. You're just saying that I'm right and you're wrong. That's it. And that's not the way we communicate. And that's not the way God communicates. Imagine God communicated with us this way. You, you, humanity, you all wrong. 
I'm right and the story, you're all going to hell. Will that be, is that what people expect from God? No, I don't, I don't expect that from God. I came to him all messed up, jacked up, and I'm still messed up in a lot of areas of my life. I don't know about you, but he loves me despite that. Verse 14, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. And this is where I want to concentrate. Verse 15, all of this, everything that you just heard, the suffering, the pain, uh, you know, we're near death, crushing, being, you know, being put to the test, you know, all of this that happened through suffering in our bodies, uh, on the constant danger of death, all of that. And verse 15, now he says, all of this, what we Christians go through, all of it is for your benefit. And you might be saying, man, you did that for me? Well, the scripture says, we're doing it for your benefit. Oh, but we don't believe in Jesus. Why would you do that for me? I don't even like your Jesus. I don't even believe in God. Well, it's for your benefit. I've never heard anybody turn away the kindness of God. They'll turn away Christianity, religion, um, Jesus, all that. But the kindness of God, I've never, I've never seen anybody turn that away and say, um, I hate that kindness or I don't want you know, your kindness or stuff like that. Right. It doesn't make it wouldn't make any sense unless the person has a mental disease or illness or something like that. But a person who has like common sense and kind of like human morality, amen, will say, wow, they're doing that for me and they don't have to. And I hate their God and I hate their Jesus. But they're still doing that for me, for my benefit. Scripture says all of this, what you heard in, in, the, in, in the scripture, suffering, death, all that stuff being all of that. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, because the word of God is going to reach more and more people, whether or not people will receive it or not, not my business. Amen. I can't convince no one that God exists. Neither could you, because it's not our responsibility to convince somebody. If I could convince people that God exists, then that means I will be all knowing all sufficient, all powerful, almighty, and I'll be God. God convinces people that he exists. That's why these debates could go on and on and on. People talk science, evolution, creation, whatever. They could go on and 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 nobody's convincing nobody because nobody invited God to do the convincing. Some atheists will go, okay, if he's real, let him strike me dead. Let him do this. Let him speak now, all that stuff. As if me or you or any atheist or any agnostic, cynic, skeptic, as if we had the power to um, move God's hand or provoke God. You think I can provoke God? Okay, God, do it now. Do it now. And then God said, oh, yeah, you want you want a problem with me? And he's going to do something. The Bible says God is slow to anger. And in his slowness to anger, I don't know if that's a day, a year. 50,000 years, a million years, how long does it take for God to anger? Do you know that? Do I know that? No. So when somebody says, oh, if there's God, let him strike me down, whatever, whatever. Um, that's foolishness. You just let them talk and be like, okay. Let, but God can if he wanted to, but that's their definition of God and my definition of God might be totally different. And that's why they're talking to some other God that we're not even talking about. That's why nine out of 10 times when I speak about Jesus to somebody, nine out of ten times they will say, Oh, I don't go to church, or I don't, I don't have, I don't, I'm not into religion. When I'm not even talking about the church building, and when I'm not talking about a religion, I'm talking about Jesus, and people will automatically bypass what I just said. They will bypass what I just said, and they'll be like, um, oh no, we don't go to church. Oh no, we're not into religion. Verse 15, all of this is for your benefit, and as God's grace reaches more and more people. There will be great Thanksgiving, great Thanksgiving, not just like, you know, turkey, you know, no, great Thanksgiving. And God will receive more and more glory, regardless who believes or not. Everything that Christians go through, every, all the suffering, all the pain that we're going to go through, amen, is for somebody else's benefit. As long as the God of heaven and earth shows his life through our dying bodies. It's not like a, 
this is one of those morning devotions like, man, I got to suffer for somebody else. Well, if you know the gospel, Jesus himself suffered for all humanity, all mankind um, because of his love. How much love that we have for one another. First Peter 4, 13 and 14. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of, the, of, the, of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory of God rests on you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Amen. That's the word. That's the scripture. It's not like, oh, wow, let me get up in the morning and start suffering uh, for, you know, another person. Suffering is going to happen. Pain is going to happen. Death is going to happen. You know, being perplexed, crushed, um, constant danger of death happens to all believers all around the world. Not just me, not just you. And guess what? It happens to everybody. The rich, the poor, the healthy, the sick, we all are in danger of death every single day. Every, I don't know if you noticed, but every day somebody's dying. Every day somebody's getting sick. Somebody, uh, Every day somebody's suffering. Every day somebody's into some kind of addiction. Every day somebody is um, broke, financially stressed. Every day, every day, something's happening every day. Amen. That's why the Bible says, let the day worry about itself. The, the day has its own worries. Amen. Don't worry about it because, you know, we can't add to the day. We can't take away from the day. We can't add to our, our height or, you know, the lack of height like me. But we can't do anything about it. But we could go to God who could do anything. Amen. And he could do something about it. So verse 15, all of this, everything that you heard me say, the video that you saw in the beginning, if you just joined me, make sure that when this is over, you watch that video I shared in the beginning of this morning Devo, and it's going to make you think. It's going to make you think the first part you say, oh, man, I heard a million people say that, and you might even had said that um, in the first part of the video, but then it flips and it, it reads backwards. You have to see it. It, you, it reads backwards and you'd be like, hmm. That's dope. That's the way, you know, people should communicate with each other. Because if I'm saying, oh, this is true, and then the opposite of truth will be what? Class? Lies, right? If you say, oh, I love you, the opposite of love will be fear or hate, right? Right? Because perfect love casts out all fear. And the opposite, biblically, the opposite of love is fear. But humanly speaking, the opposite of love is hate. So there's always an opposite. There is, no, there is a God. No, there is no God. I'm a man. No, I'm a woman. Uh, you know, and you keep on going. I'm rich. No, I'm broke. I'm happy. No, I'm sad. It's always an opposite. But God is constant and consistent. He's always true. Amen. He never says one thing and then says, oh, no, I changed my mind. I'm not going to do that now. And that's not true anymore. I'm, you know, no. God, when he says a thing, it is a thing. He promises a thing. It shall come to pass. But for your benefit, amen, um, he chose us, amen, Christians, to suffer, to um, be perplexed, but we're not driven by despair. Um, sometimes we'll get knocked down, but we won't be destroyed. We suffer in our bodies, but the life of Jesus also will be seen in our bodies and through our bodies. So this thing is for your benefit, amen. So, so many people go around saying, I'm crazy. Um, you know, some people say, oh, you believe in that stuff. You do that church stuff and you're religious, whatever. Whatever the case may be. I'll tell you one thing, though. When you see me suffering, amen, I'm not suffering alone. And I'm not talking about my family. Or I'm talking about I'm suffering with Jesus in me, with God in me. You decide what the difference is. If it looks the same, like everybody going crazy in the world, when I'm going through something and just looks the same, just like everybody else, then you're right. There's no power. There's no God. He's just crazy into some kind of religion, cult, whatever you want to say. But if you see the life of God coming out through me, through suffering, pain, um, through constant um, danger of death, um, when you see that evidence of God working through or something that you kind of like say, oh, that's different working through. Amen. Don't deny it. Go to God and ask him, how is it possible? Or is, is that same spirit available to me? Ask God, go to God. 
oh, Sam, you can't convince me that God exists. You're absolutely 100% right. I don't, and I don't have to. It's not my job. If it was my job, then, you know, if, 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 I, if it was my job and God gave me the authority and power to convince people that, listen, everybody be Christian then. I'll be going, I'll be saving my block, my family, um, the corner, everybody I pass. If I had that power, we all be Christian then. But that's not the way life goes. And it's a choice. God is not saying you have to believe and serve me. That sounds like a religion out there. But Jesus said, I offer you life and death. You choose. Amen. You choose to live or you choose not to. And people right now, and I've done it before, I chose my own way. It's the easiest way. Everybody else agrees. There's not a lot of, you know, rules and regulations about it. You just go your own way. But the Bible says that man's ways seem okay. It seems right, but leads to destruction. Amen. And I could tell you, I was on my way to destruction. Eventually, I'm going to pass away. But um, according to the Bible, right, I live forever. And with Jesus, with God, amen. And those who reject Jesus and the message of the gospel and they live forever. I mean, they, they'll live forever also, but separated from God. Now, I could already hear somebody, well, what do you mean if somebody rejects God or uh, doesn't receive the gospel when they die, they go separated like to hell? What does that mean? I hear somebody saying already, well, how about if somebody never heard about Jesus? Will it be fair for them to go to hell? Well, thank God that he's a just God. So I know if somebody on the other side of the world, a remote island, they're still like primitive and they're still, you know, out in the jungle and they don't have no type of like way to get the message of the gospel. You think, do you think that when they die, it'll be fair or just for God to send them all to hell? Because, oh, you never heard of me because you were too far. You were out in the boondocks. So you're going to go to hell? No. We serve a just God. And he's going to be like, oh, nobody presented you to me. So I'm going to present myself to you. Come up. Come with me. And, amen. And however he does it from that point, I don't know. You don't know. But maybe he'll show them um, what, what it could be like to serve him. Maybe he'll, he himself will share the gospel to them. Amen. And then they could choose whether or not to believe or not. It's not my business. Amen. I can't convince nobody and I can't go to all. Obviously, no one could go to all four corners of the earth preaching the gospel. Um, you don't have enough days in your life to do that. There's millions and millions of people um, that haven't heard the gospel at all. And millions of people that haven't heard the gospel at all. Amen. Amen. You choose life or death. It's your choice. Only you can convince you that you need Jesus. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit does the convicting and the convincing. Amen. We are just the mouthpiece, the preachers, the evangelists. Amen. We go and spread the gospel. We're actually commissioned to go and preach the gospel, baptizing um, the everybody in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Preached the gospel to every single person in the world. Amen. And a lot of times when we feel the rejection, we have to understand that they're not rejecting me or you. They're rejecting the gospel, Jesus, God. And it's, um, you look at people, you were like, well, um, we'll try again. Or I know somebody will send somebody else. And if you really believe um, that there is no God, some people are just like that. But it's a hard heart um, that leads you away from God or believing. So I'm out of here. I know this is not like one of those morning devos. I just want people to understand what the scripture says when it comes to benefit. What we go through, what God puts us through is for somebody else's benefit. So I will leave you with this question. How do you and I help God's grace reach more and more people? How do you help God's grace reach more and more people? Amen. And for me, it's very easy. You just do open your mouth and speak about what God has done in your life. Amen. Uh, I was already explaining to my daughter, she's going to be going to school soon. First uh, kindergarten. And 
So not everybody you meet is going to believe God. Not everybody you meet, not all those kids are going to have parents. Not all those kids are going to be happy. Not all those kids are going to think the way you think. Not all those kids are going to want to be your friend. Not all those kids are going to be friendly to you. Not I'm just preparing her, man, because um, it'd be great if everybody was just like cool with everybody, loved everybody, but it's not the case. And I also told her that when you see an angry kid or a kid that's sad or whatever, there's always a reason. So I'm trying to teach her not to judge. I say, oh, you must be, no, you don't know, but you can ask. And if that person doesn't want to answer you, you're okay with that. You just be kind. Be careful, cautious, I told her. And, you know, if anything is like wrong or somebody's treating you badly, go to the teachers. Don't be afraid to tell the teachers. All that. I'm already thinking it forward because I'm like, man, it's going to be tough and it's not going to get any easier for my kids, you know, for your kids, for your family, for my family. So we have to approach this with the love of God in us and then take it from there. It's not going to be easy, but with God, he wants us to go through all of this, amen, and let people know it's for their benefit. It's for your benefit, amen. So I'm out of here. Or, um, Brother Robert, Matthew 24, 14 says, the gospel will be preached in the whole world before the end comes, so that means everyone will know. Well, that's debatable. I don't think everybody will know, um, but I get where you're coming from. I don't think everybody would know because we're, the scriptures and the languages are, I don't know everybody's language. The scriptures are not uh, translated into every language out there in the world. And there's not evangelists reaching all four corners of the earth. I don't think it's possible. Amen. But there's a number the scripture says that when that number is reached and those number of people have heard the gospel, then that will bring um, the day of the Lord will come. Amen. Um, but that's my hopes that everybody will be reached as well. God bless you and God be true and every man a liar. Thank you for the word. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Victor. God bless you. I have a great day. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always, always that God is good, even in our suffering and our pain. Blazing Bible studies.